I wanted to ask, what do you think separates second layer protocol from the first layer? Like, why is Lightning not the base protocol? Do you think it should, the base protocol should evolve or freeze? And what's your vision for Bitcoin 1.0? I think that part of good architectural design and network protocols and i say this because my actual specialization is network protocols so i have a masters degree in data communications and distributed systems this is what i studied network protocol design um, and one of the fundamental principles when you're designing protocols is to have separation between the layers such that you don't have side effects bleeding from one layer to another. This form of abstraction that allows you to have clean interfaces between the layers, so that you can't see what's happening in one layer from the layer underneath or above. There are no effects that bleed. You don't try to implement everything in one layer. These are fundamental principles in network protocol design, but not just network protocol design. They are the same exact principles that you have in software engineering. Right? When you write a function, you want that function to do one thing, to do it as simply as possible, to do it with zero side effects. Right? That is how programming works. And you create abstractions that do one thing simply and with no side effects. And then you build higher level abstractions that combine these primitives to do more complex things. And the reason we do that is because you can prove the validity and the behavior of a simple primitive without side effects. And once you have a collection of primitives that are well proven and reliable, then you can build on top of that with additional functionality. That's how you get scale, but it's also how you get modularity. It's also how you get security. It's also how you get predictability in performance uh, and in the security, of course. These are not just good principles. They are essential principles when you are trying to scale. Otherwise, things start breaking very, very quickly. And we see that on the internet, where some of the layers are not quite as separated as they should be. So, you, know, you have these nice, clean layers. You have your, your physical layer, you have your uh, data transport layer, uh, things like Ethernet, for example. You have your basic IP network layer, then you have your connection-oriented transport layer with TCP, and then you have bleh on top of all of that. <laughs> it was all clean, but then above that, suddenly you started getting these weird effects. Right? So once you get above TCP, things get a bit messy. And some of the layers are not quite separate, and they step on each other, and you have side effects that bleed up and down. But the biggest mistake we made on the internet was not building sufficient privacy into the base layer. And now we're trying to retrofit that on top. And we're trying to do it with the fourth and fifth and sixth layer above IP. And the result is a disaster. The result is totalitarian surveillance. The result is the death of peer-to-peer -peer principles, centralization of power, the death of net neutrality, and all of these other effects that we see come directly from the fact that you have insufficient privacy in the base layer, insufficient fungibility of packets, if you want to put it that way. And so what is the important thing we need to achieve in the base layer is not scaling. The important thing you need to achieve in the base layer that cannot be achieved in the layers above is fungibility and privacy with strong guarantees, simple primitives. And if we have privacy primitives and fungibility primitives in the base layer, then we can do scaling at the second layer and we can do it securely. Otherwise, we have a privacy problem. And that privacy problem will get magnified as we go up the layers. If you can do analysis on the base layer, that gives a great degree of insight into what is happening above. There are, at the moment, dozens of companies that are doing analytics. Those are just the private companies. Of course, every intelligence agency in the world is tracking every single Bitcoin transaction, every UTXO, on every altcoin, and every service. And they have little hooks in the centralized exchanges, merchant payment services, so they can get feeds that attach each one of those things to specific identities. And once they have one identity in correlation, they can figure out the rest. We need to destroy their business model.